I am the um, senior uh, global market manager at SI. Uh, I've been there five years now. I actually joined the company as a social coordinator um, and have kind of claimed the ranks, about like Bournemouth, um, to the Premier League, um, as it were. And, uh, you know, social for me, once upon a time, was, you know, 365, 24 7. And I lived it and breathed it. Um, and uh, to give you a little bit of a background for those of you who are not aware of what Football Manager is, um, we are um, the, uh, the world's number one uh, football management simulation. Um, it's uh, produced and made by Sports Interactive, the studio behind the game, and it's uh, a wholly owned subsidiary of Sega. Um, and uh, Sports Interactive, in one shape or of, 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 of form, have been in operation for, for 25 years. We used to make the, the Championship Manager series before 15 years ago when we separated from our publisher and became, became Football Manager. Um, despite the fact that we're a heritage brand, um, we're still producing 86% rated video games, um, you know, all these years on, because we absolutely live and breathe what we do and live and breathe um, our product. Um, and in terms of who consumes Football Manager and in terms of who our audience is, um, it's often said that we are the game for real football fans. Um, and what we mean by that is that our audience is very different and separate to the kind of video gaming audience because we're talking to primarily football fans because the proposition as, as, a, as, a, as a football manager player is to jump into the hot seat of the club that you've grown up loving and supporting. Um, and our fans have been described as hipsters, geeks, passionate experts. Um, they are disc would describe themselves as football generalists, you know, eclectics, interested in culture, interested in kits interested in the Polish league. You know, they watch everything. They're at the forefront of every conversation. They're consuming it constantly. Um, and they actually massively over-index in terms of educated males. So across Europe, um, about 25% of men um, will complete further education. Football manager players, it's about 48%. So we're talking to people who absolutely live and breathe the finer elements of the game. So in terms of social, um, is anyone familiar with the term BAU? Just a show of hands. Okay. So BAU um, is really the worst thing about social media, the absolute definitive worst thing about social media. And what is it? Well, this is an example of BAU. Just digest this for a second and think about how many things are wrong with this tweet. Think about how many things are wrong with this tweet. British Gas Help, a customer service, you know, account um, is trying to tap into, you know, a, a trend that it has got absolutely no right to be part of to tell you that they're open to 10 o'clock. And this is, this is social nowadays. Social has become about volume and output rather than relevance. And this is something that is, you know, does not exist within my team. I completely stripped this out as soon as I could. You know, you shouldn't be focusing on when you're posting. You should be focusing on what you're posting. Because if your objectives are about output, then you're already failing and failing badly. You know, I like to use the analogy of like a best friend. Everyone's got a best friend, okay? Imagine your best friend was talking to you every day, 24 seven, constantly. It would kind of demean the beauty of the time that you actually spend together because you'd have absolutely nothing to talk about because you'd just be constantly in each other's faces. And this is, and, and, and this is, this is what BAU, this is what BAU creates. It just creates noise. And, you know, we are operating here in London. How many, how many branded messages have you taken in today just by being outside in London? So social media, most people are on, you know, three, four different platforms. Think about the, the frequency of the noise. So please just, Stop posting and making content for content's sake. Now, you know, social should really be about the conversations that you have with friends, purposeful. You know, you need to, you need to find what that purpose is and you've got to double down on it, okay? And listen, I was guilty of this. This was my tweets four years ago, five years ago, sorry, when I took over 
the, the brand account. I joined in April and the World Cup came in Brazil and that was the first time they really let me loose on the channels with no playbook, no real objective, no real strategy and just said, yep, yeah, you've been here a couple of months now, crack on. And I was like, okay, sure. Had to look through what the brand was already doing and then just try to do more of that and try to find my own kind of personality and try and kind of put my own slant on tweets. You know, I'm embarrassed by this. I'm actually embarrassed by this because there's absolutely no legacy in any of this content. What, what goal was this? Don't know. More goals would be nice. What game was that? Don't know. What a goal that was reminds me. Why am I using me as a brand account? Who am I? Who's the person behind this account? Oh, Howard, you don't want to see him angry? What? I mean, what, what, what's that about? Right? That's, that's an example of business as usual social. And, now, and in essence, when you're producing content, you're making stuff and you're putting stuff out and you're asking people to care about it, but there's no strategy behind it. You know, it's just, it's, as it says, it's, you know, it's pointless. It's absolutely pointless. And when I was able to, when I was climbing the ranks and then I started to have decision-making powers, started to look at what we were doing as a brand and it was, it was messy, it was disjointed. If you came to our channels and browsed through YouTube, which people do, some of our most viewed content is historical content. People were seeing our content and going like, that. what is this brand? Like, what, what do they stand for? What are they outputting? Like, this stuff's just a mess. So we sent this guy into retirement. This guy was on our pack for 15 years and he was supposed to symbolize you, the manager. And we just felt, nah, that's really inauthentic because in the simulation world, you're the manager. And in our game, no two stories can be the same because as soon as you click your first continue, and as soon as you start to make decisions, it never ends like GTA where you level up and then complete the game. The game just continues based on the way that you decide the game is going to go. So what we did when we retired this guy, we thought about really, what is our purpose? Why do we exist? Why the hell do people buy our game? And why do we spend a painstaking amount of time buying it? And we came up with something that was really authentic, which was that we, as a, as a football product, as a simulator, as a, a credible part of football culture, we take football fans right to the very heart of the beautiful game. We level up their knowledge of football and we enable them to live out their dreams. I'm never going to manage Celtic. It's not something that's available to me, but in this alternate immersive you know, kind of game world that we've created, I can have that experience. So that's what we are giving you. So once we understand exactly what a strategy is, then we can take that strategy and we can absolutely execute it across every single touch point. And this is in essence, what you need to get to. You need to get to why you exist. You need to get to, to what it is that you're actually giving the consumer. You need to understand yourself so that you can get your tone and your content right. And you need to think about what your USPs are. Now, in our space, we're constantly put up against FIFA. We don't see FIFA as a competitor. It's a completely different experience. It's a completely different audience. And what we can offer in this space, no other video game can get close to. Our database is the biggest football database in world football. It's licensed by professional clubs, some of the biggest. It's 25 years in the making. It has over 500,000 active players. No one can get close to that. You could start a football management game tomorrow. You never get close to their database. It's updated 365, 27, 24-7 every single day. Um, our game is about innovation. Our industry is about innovation. We push the boundaries. We had a feature in the game last year where um, the, the, the players that the game simulates when real players retire can come out as gay because we want to be pushing stuff that we believe in and we want to be setting the agenda and the conversation. We had a Brexit feature in the game two years ago where we simulated all the different outcomes, what would happen when the UK leaves the European Union with regards to work permits. Like, we are, we're agenda setters. We, we're all about innovation. So once we understand this, then we can think about what the brand and the social strategy needs to look like. So the manager's gone, and we're saying that we're taking you at the heart of the beautiful game. That's you. That's your view if you were the manager following your team out for that big game. So our brand and digital strategy has to come through in every single thing that we do. So in terms of the role that social plays, if we're saying that we've, we're taking you to the heart of the beautiful game and we're saying that the product lets you live out your dreams, 
What role can social fulfil within that? Education. Because we've got this world that is so intense and granular and detailed and deep and scary. And then there's this massive, massive, massive audience here that like football. We use social to bridge the gap. We use social to take an interest in football, level you up, and then get you to the point where this world is, you know, just fantastic and beautiful and deep and, and just so mesmerizing. Does anyone know who this is? Yeah, this is Antonio Marin. He's 18. He was born in 2001. He's a wonder kid. Okay, that is what our game's about. Our game's about the next gen football talent. Our game is lauded for discovering people like Lionel Messi, who our fans knew was going to be world class at the age of 15. Our, ga our game's known for discovering guys like Neymar before they left South America. So we need to acknowledge that that's what our fans want. FIFA does Ronaldo cover stars because that's what their fans want. That would be completely inauthentic to us. We can't kind of play in that space. So when we know that our fans love Wonder Kids, look at the engagement when we ask them to participate in that conversation. That's 3,500 re replies on an organic tweet, 2,000 likes, nearly 200 retweets. And then what happens is, see when you're authentic and you hit the right notes, you get the biggest clubs in world football joining in the conversation organically. And then you can take it further. Because if we want to go and say, listen, we're the, we're the absolute definitive authority on Wonder Kids, and we want to try and you know, push this out in an organic digital and social strategy, this is what happens. People then start to become ambassadors and authority figures for us, taking the content that we produced and then going, look, 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 recognize me, recognize me, look, 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 I'm, 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 I'm activating your social strategy for you. And this is what influence is, right? Because then, see when it's coming from friends, other people on their networks are going to go, oh, this is interesting, what's this? Oh, any football manager? Because anytime a brand's talking about something, everyone knows, consumer-wise, that it's mediated. It's exactly what you, know, you want them to hear. But see when it's coming from other people, that's where it gets really rich. And you can only achieve that by understanding as a starting point what it is they actually want to hear. That's what you need to get to the nitty-gritty of. And then we can take this content, as Ben said, and we can actually repurpose it and make it really native for emerging platforms. So he talked about stories. Stories is huge. The swipe ups on stories, the attention on stories, massive. So we can take the Wonder Kids and we can take you to the heart of the beautiful game natively where we can engage you and involve you in the story. Tap to hold. Now, you're not really doing anything. It's predetermined what's happening, but by stopping the story, you feel like you're part of the story. Then the next tile, Stop to find your wonder kid, and then stop on the next tile to, your, to, 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 to decide your formation. And then the end slide is just swipe up to play the game. And they're in, they're actually taking part in the story. They're at the heart of the beautiful game natively. We'll not try to take them anywhere. We'll not try to take them to another channel because if you're on Facebook and, 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 and a brand wants me to go to YouTube, no, because I went to Facebook for a reason. You know what I mean? I'm in Facebook because I want to be on Facebook. And we can take it further in terms of that authority, so we can work with people and partners who have got similar you know, ethos and, and agenda here. So the Bundesliga is the number one league in the world for developing youth talent. That's where all the wonder kids are going because they get to play there. They don't get to play in the Premier League. And we can work with new voices of authority, scouted football, to do deep content on the next gen talent in world football. So that when your mates down the pub, and you know, you're joining a football conversation, he's telling you about who the next crop is going to be. That's what football fans want to do. That's what drives the conversation. It's about one-upmanship. And then we can take it further. We take you right to the heart of the game. So see when you're watching Man City and you go, wow, they are such a good football team. We can explain to you how they're such a good football team. We can talk to you about the system. And it's twofold because it feeds right into the game. You can learn to play like City in the game, but also as well, you can have a conversation with your mates down the pub and go, this is why Pep's so good. This is, the, you know, this is the, the players that he uses. This is the system that he uses. And it just enhances and levels up the football knowledge. And it's all done through social. Right? And this is the results. So this is the byline. This is something that we launched earlier this year. And just look at the difference in the numbers on Google Analytics in that time frame. Now, we're at the end of the cycle. Our game is now eight months old. And we've managed to bring people back in. And we've managed to engage new users. 
and we've managed to hit our benchmarks way before we were supposed to hit them in terms of business plan projections because we're creating stuff that people actually want to read and you don't have to be a football manager fan to read this because this is just interesting stuff that will enhance your understanding of football and we can take it further we can go what we actual authorities this is Raphael Honigstein 900,000 Twitter followers German football journalist one of the smartest guys in football knows the, knows the Bundesliga inside out the Bundesliga were a new partner for us this season so rather than Tom our FM show host saying here's five teams to manage in the Bundesliga bring in Rafa and he'll tell you why to manage them he'll tell you what players to look out for what players to avoid what teams might be interesting for you to manage he'll take you right to the heart of the beautiful game and then influencers we can take it further because Rafa is really influential to me my nephew does not care about Rafa does not care about anybody other than who he's watching on YouTube so Zwieback, for example, Zwieback is a new voice of influence and authority. And you need to get on board with that because the world's changing. You know, a really famous story from a, from a team that we sponsor called Hashtag United, where they're front of shirt sponsors. And one of the guys told me that he was on a shoot, and I think it was with Adidas. And there was like professional elite footballers there. And all the kids were running to Hashtag United because they were saying, you're a mate, you're a mate, you know, you know he's... Those guys are inaccessible, but like, you know, you're a mate because they're watching these guys on YouTube and they've got, you know, that access into their lives. See, see, that was me and I was 13, 14 and Henrik Larsson had been on a, on a set. I would have been wrapped around his leg. But the world's changing. The world's changing and brands need to acknowledge that. You really need to acknowledge that. And we can take it further. And the most, the most critical thing you've got to do on social is be relevant. You absolutely need to be relevant. Don't be posting British gas style BAU stuff trying to join random you know, trends, be relevant. So this is our product stuff where we drop features for the new game, little teases, all organic, none of this is paid. Rather than just drop what the feature is, we're like, listen, let's find a way to really make this relevant. So see that top line on, on all the tweets? We could have just posted that, but what we wanted to do was make it extremely relevant. So we found stuff that already existed in the football space, and then we quote retweeted it. So for example, Celtic, winter break, taking the squad away on a, 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 a kind of training session that's new in the game so let's make it really contextual let's make it really relevant and you know make people really understand what we're trying to do here let's look at the engagement all organic relevance trends everyone wants to jump on a trend of course they do because that's what socializes what's cool today is gone tomorrow what's interesting today is done tomorrow it needs to be through the prism of who you are can it be just jumping into stuff where you've got no right to be playing in. It needs to be through the prism of your brand always. And see when it's done, you know, 9,000 likes, 2,000 retweets, 5,000 likes, just because it's stuff that people recognize it as authentic. It's not, it's not exactly what you call clever. It's not exactly what you call like razor sharp. It's just authentic. In terms of how you talk to your audience, this is what you've really got to spend a lot of time on. Going back to those tweets that I sent, which I'm horrified about, during the World Cup, like, can I be using me if you're on a brand account? Unless you're explicitly saying, I'm Barry from Tylerall, right? And telling people and trying to build this kind of like relationship as Barry. See if it's a, see if it's a brand, can it be me or I? It needs to be we, our, us, to reinforce that you are the brand. You need to talk, you need, you need to really spend a lot of time on, on how you're going to talk and what you're not going to do, because it's really easy in social media to get involved in an argument. I've done it a thousand times. It's not appropriate if your brand purpose and tone of voice don't allow it because it needs to be completely consistent and in terms of that consistency of the brand if we're saying that we're the number one management simulation game and we're saying that we're the absolute elite in that space everything that we do has got to be elite so you look at this i'm absolutely obsessed by integration because across the digital space you don't get to decide at what point the consumer comes to you. You don't get to decide that because we're living in a world now where the smartphone dictates the journey and they can come in at any touch point. They can come in at Facebook, they can come in at Twitter, they can come in via your website. So when they come in, it needs to be joined up. Your website needs to look like your socials and your socials need to look like any other touch point. So these little elements which just feel like, you know, design for the sake of design, they're purposeful so that you can go, yeah, that's Football Manager and recognize that as Football Manager. You need to learn. You need to test and you need to be prepared to make mistakes because if you're not prepared to make mistakes, you're never going to develop 
your social strategy. You're never going to develop your social output. And as Ben said previously, Twitter's a great place to test. And it's demoralising when you send a tweet out and it just absolutely bombs. You know what I mean? Because as an admin, as a social media manager, you're like, shit. You know, I thought that was going to fly. But listen, it's important. You've got to pump stuff out and then you've got to find what works so that you can repurpose it, repurpose it properly for the other channels. And everything that we do is underpinned by research. We just completed a huge project where we are social, big social media agency. We just completed a project with OMA Studio, who are Insight Consultants. And we went out and actually met people in all of our territories, spoke to them, gave them a massive survey with a huge incentive to take part and just said, listen, who are you? What are you up to? What are you into? Why do you like football? What do you hear about football? And we curated all of that information. So see our FM20 strategy? Every single thing we're doing can come back to those insights. And like, see, like Survey Monkey, it's cheap as chips. And you can pump out 10 questions and you can give them 50 quid restaurant vouchers and you'll get an absolute ton of responses because people like free stuff. You know what I mean? And you'll get, you'll get back some really good stuff that can actually inform your entire strategy. And obviously, in terms of extra time, I'd love to talk to you guys at length about what we do, really passionate about it. But this is some stuff that you should really be thinking about. You know, social listening, Twitter's great for it. You can type in anything and you can find conversations like that. And as, and as Ben said, we like SEO. You can go to Google, you can go to, you can go to YouTube. You can actually see what people are into or what's being missed and you can create that stuff. Tracking's great, using things like bit.ly to shorten links. You can, co you can actually brand them with like, you know, like fm.game forward slash yada 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 and then those links when they're clicked will register in the back end and tell you how many people have clicked it so you can see really quickly if your content's engaging channel objectives set objectives that are that are specific measurable actionable reasonable and timely your objectives need to come back to that framework so that you can come back and go yep this is how we're measuring it and you can actually see if you're making progress in terms of your objectives Coverage, get people on the accounts at the right time. Our audience is online on Sundays and in the evening. So why would we have a 9 to 5 social strategy? We're going to miss them. So you've got to make sure you get good social coverage when your audience is active. You've got to report, because if you don't report frequently, how do you know if you're making progress? How do you know if you're, if you're, if you're, if you're reaching those objectives? Best practice, Ben just gave you what I would classify as being you know, the Premier League of best practice. There are some really quality insights, covered some really good stuff. It's all out there. Facebook Creative Hub, you know, it's all on the back end. Go and look at it. Go and spend some time with it. Some really, really cool stuff that you can do. Get outreach to your community. Ben covered that as well. Just give people stuff. Listen, do you want to write an article for us? I can't pay you, but I'll tell you what we'll give you. We'll give you the game for life and we'll give you a doormat. <laughs> Done. You know what I mean? You had me at hello. Um, checklists. I'm absolutely, I hate bad grammar. I hate it. I hate bad spelling. So see our guys, they've got a checklist before they put something out. It's like, if you cover this, 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 done. So easy, to, so easy to make. And then once you've made it, you always be in the right space to be putting content out. Nostalgia, perfect example. I mean, this is organic on Facebook. We've got a 1.2 million audience. This is, this is organic because nostalgia works. You've got the right balance. Because if you want to be a forward thinking modern brand, you can't always be harking back to, to the old days. So you've got to like, find the right strands. And then this one, this is, this is me, man. This is what I'm about. Like, we don't really do a fantastic amount on YouTube because I won't bore you with the details, but it's complex. We've got a very, very, very risk averse legal department who need to sometimes vet content. And if we're putting a Let's Play video on YouTube and it's maybe like an hour and a half long, that's not going to get vetted for six to 12 months. Do you know what I mean? So YouTube, for us, we can't be agile on it. So we double down on the channels where we can actually, you know, really get a bit of pop and really, you know, engage with our audience. And I would give you guys that advice. So don't worry about trying to be active on every platform. Find one or two that you can be absolutely shit hot on and just go all in, go massively all in. And this is the result of when everything comes together. So the FM19 rebrand was really my first project as you know, the, kinda, the, the global brand manager and, and leading the digital strategy. And you know, we've beat our business plan projections by two months. 
and we're up in just about every territory. Germany was a new territory, so that's helped. But if you take Germany out, our numbers are still massively healthy. And the only reason this has been possible is because I don't let anything leave the door unless it aligns with the strategy. Nothing. <laughs> My guys come to me and go, we've had an opportunity from these guys. I go, how does that affect our strategy? No, doesn't he? Then it. Everything needs to come back to your strategy. It's got to be joined up. It's got to be purposeful. And it needs to make sense to the, to the consumer. Because see, nowadays, especially Gen Z, they actually really care about who you are and what you stand for. Like, that's, that's, that's what they are as, as, as people. Like, they're really curious. And, like, they like to know that you stand for something. And what we stand for is everything that I've shown you. And that's, that's how we uh, are successful on social. So, thanks very much for your time. It's been a real pleasure.